shells, but it does have apricot powder. So I wanted to see what you thought about that. Apple cider vinegar toner. How do we feel about this? Today, we're doing something a little bit different because we're reacting to like almost like a reaction. Uh, it's time to talk about sustainability in skincare. And Shelby is an amazing YouTuber who focuses on sustainability. She has an environmental science degree and she popped up in my recommendations because Hiram and her created a video together talking about zero waste skincare. Um, I also have a group of butterflies that I communicate with and talk with regularly and they sent me this video over and over and said, you have to watch this. And I was like, instead of watching, why don't I react? These reaction videos are all about learning together and I am nowhere near perfect, but I wanna make this world a better place than I entered it. And I wanna do what I can to both be better as a consumer, but also to push brands to be better when it comes to what they create. So today that's what we're gonna do. And for those who don't know or are new here, hello, my name is Cassandra Mingson. I'm an expert and I've been in the industry for over 10 years and I've struggled with acne for over 15. I'm a medical esthetician and although I've worked alongside and with both doctors and dermatologists, I am not a physician myself. That being said, I love analyzing, scrutinizing, and learning from other people's skincare routines. And fun fact, I've actually reacted to like three of Hiram's skincare routines, but I haven't edited the damn videos. Um, it's really hard to edit, so I'm hoping that I'll edit this one. Uh, but today we're going to learn a little bit about zero waste myths and talk about sustainability in skincare. And for today's video, we have a sustainable charity sponsor. This video is in partnership with Seabay, and the company and I are both matching each other's donations to environmental conservation. You know that I only take sponsorships from brands that I love and enjoy, but on top of loving and enjoying this vegan and cruelty-free brand, they are focused on zero or lower waste. They are focused on sustainability. And the fact that there is a charity component to this partnership as well as helping to spread the message of sustainability and to be able to fund producing, editing, creating, uploading, and sharing this kind of content with you is something I'm grateful for. So we'll be talking about some of these zero waste skincare staples a little bit later to help you reduce and hopefully recycle. Um, but for now, let's press play. So there are some areas of sustainability that I personally actively avoid talking about. One of them is food and the other one is skincare. And this is simply because I'm not an expert in any of those fields and there are plenty of people out there to give you their expert advice in those fields. So why would I give it to you when I don't really know anything? So after a few years of trying to create the absolute perfect zero waste skincare routine and largely failing multiple times, mostly due to the lack of brands and products out there that are actually good for your skin and also less packaging. So in light of that, I decided we would turn to the god of skincare on YouTube himself and ask for his advice and get his insight on if they're good for our skin or not. But I just thought it would be fun to explore some of the most commonly used items and talk to Hiram about them. Oh, I would just buy everything. <laughs> Her editing is on point too, can I just say? I appreciate this cinematic greatness. What do we even need to be looking for when we're thinking about creating a sustainable or for lack of a better word, zero waste skincare routine? And obviously the first thing that comes to mind is packaging. And with the rise of skincare becoming so popular within the last couple years, there is no short supply of plastic bottles, but there are some better options and choices that we can make. I really love that she brings this up. Uh, as noted, there are so many things that we consume and yes, skincare is not just something Something that you do to feel good, but it's also hygiene. However, there is a lot of plastic packaging. Now, I hope that she's going to speak about this more. I always thought that glass was the more sustainable alternative, but I've dug into things and learned new things that have me thinking that maybe that's wrong, and maybe sustainably made plastic that is recycled properly is actually more sustainable than glass. I'm not totally sure. I really need to understand how that works, but I hope she's going to speak on it. Definitely the most sustainable things that I have found are things like paper. Um, this, for instance, is a shampoo bar. <laughs> And then there are other brands and packages that sell things in, you know, recycled or sustainable paper product. Um, but I'm hoping she's going to elaborate a little bit more on the differences between glass and plastic and whether or not one is actually more sustainable. Um, and even recycling glass, I didn't know that you had to remove all of the stickers off of glassware before you recycled them. Uh, if you didn't know to soak your stickers, soak your stickers. Um, but instead of me explaining my confusion, let's let her explain what she knows. And I think it's only fitting that we go through the three R's 
in their order of importance and talk about how to prioritize these things. So number one is reduce. The whole idea with the first R of the three R's is reduce, which means to buy as few things as you need. Like I said, skincare has kind of taken over the YouTube sphere recently. It's having a moment similar to what makeup had. This is so relevant, and this is probably the hardest one for me. She is so right. I think reducing is something we can all be a little bit better at. And I wanna, you know, kind of reiterate something that James Welsh mentioned on Twitter. Um, he specifically mentioned, you know, we as skincare connoisseurs and YouTubers or skincare reviewers or people who work in the industry as professionals, we have way more product that it makes sense for any person who's not in this industry to have. James even said, you know, skincare YouTubers are kind of like product reviewers. And even if I'm using these products on clients, on patients, giving to my friends and family or using on myself, there's no way I'm going through it all. But I do this and I swatch these products on my hands to try to show you so you can have a more informed decision before making a purchase or hopefully align you to a purchase that would actually work for you, but that you actually need. And when people see, you know, people with their skincare collections or makeup collections on YouTube, please don't think that that is what the norm should be. You know, just the way a mechanic is going to have a ton of tools, skincare products for us are those tools. It doesn't make sense for every single person to have those. And um, we do promote a lot of different products because there are so many different skin types. But you and your beautiful face, at least for the time being, is just one. And I think that's important to remember when trying to reduce your consumption or trying to make sure that you're actually getting products that work for you. You've also always heard me say that the skin takes on average 28 days to go through a complete cellular cycle. That's why I encourage others, which is kind of against the norm, but based on science and anatomy, I encourage others to try not to switch up their products more more than once a month. Um, because if something's working, if you switch a bunch of variables, you won't know which thing actually worked. Or if something's not working, breaking you out or causing irritation, you won't be able to pinpoint which one. And I know that that really goes against, you know, kind of uh, the consumerism mindset. And I understand how, you know, there can be positive and negatives on both sides of the spectrum. But based on anatomy and based on my understanding and knowledge at this point, that's what I recommend. And, um, you know, I know it's hard because there's a new video almost every single day that talks about skincare but it's about finding what works for you, seeing other people try it so that you don't have to, you know, and trying to reduce your consumption by making choices that are going to serve you for the long run. But honestly, this one is the hardest for me, and um, yeah, I could, I could be a bit better at this too. <laughs> the second R would be reuse, so that would be something that would be like refillable packaging. There are some brands that we're going to talk about today that offer take-back programs to reuse their packaging, and reusing and recycling are different. I love, love, love reusable. I know that Lush Cosmetics has a back program, but honestly, their cosmetics are more fun, not really treatment. I hope she's going to bring this up, but even things like getting rid of your disposable items, such as your cotton makeup pads or your makeup wipes, those are so unsustainable. And getting little things like these, these are these little seashell makeup removers for both face and eyes. Um, this is something that you can actually throw in the wash and reuse. And again, this is today's charity sponsor. They're Seabay. They are mermaid for ocean lovers. Um, I'm hoping she's going to be talking about things like this because any Anything that you have that is disposable, try to switch it out for something that is reusable. And again, this doesn't mean, you know, over consume everything and start from scratch. This means use and finish what you have and then try to make more conscious decisions in the future. But I'm not the expert in sustainability, so that's just the way that I see it at this point. So the third R would be recycling. And recycling here would mean to choose items that are much more widely recyclable or easily recyclable. But certain materials like plastic are not as good to recycle as items like glass. Glass is recyclable indefinitely. Plastic is only recyclable a time or two and much of it doesn't get recycled at all. This is great to hear and I'm going to make an assumption. Again, I'm going to assume that cardboard is better. Based on this, um, from my current understanding, that is completely correct. You can recycle glass an infinite amount of times, whereas plastic, the bonds in them actually break down. And I'm pretty sure they have to be certain types of plastic or pure plastics in order to recycle that. So from that understanding, maybe glass is better, but I've also noticed that glass is much more expensive because it weighs more, it's heavier, and then for some reason, luxury products are usually packaged in glass. You know, weight psychologically actually makes a product feel more expensive um, or fuller or something. So unfortunately, we have a lot 
lot more of the expensive products that are glass packaged. Um, and even the ordinary, I love that they have glass packages, but I do wonder about the plastic in this little dropper bottle. Um, I do wonder about the sticker. And then again, with all of these, it's like, okay, can you reuse these? Can you recycle these? For example, can you fill this up with something else when you're done? Can you reuse little items like these as storage containers instead of Ziploc bags? Or, you know, can you reuse facial wipes or, you know, washcloths or even loofahs that you might throw away? Um, because some loofahs are made of plastic and some are made of sponge. And I would assume that sponges are more sustainable, but are you, you know, somehow harming ocean life by farming sponges? I don't know, but that's why I'm here to find out. <laughs> So in the recyclable category, I wouldn't only consider what you can recycle in your home, but also what brands have take back programs to recycle it themselves. Recently, Earth Heroes started taking their packaging back for their skincare and they will recycle it through TerraCycle. So that's a really good option when you can't find, you know, the perfect zero waste skincare routine. And then the last thing to keep in mind when it comes to recycling and packaging is also to choose formulas that are more concentrated. So in so many products you see today, not just skincare, but also cleaning, like 90% of these formulas is water. So if you can choose a solid product instead of a liquid product, that's going to reduce packaging and also reduce shipping emissions because it costs a lot less emissions to ship a bar than it does to ship a bottle. This is a good point, but just a note of caution. Um, if someone does have more sensitive skin, more potent doesn't always mean better. More potent could mean irritation. And of course this goes by a case by case example. Um, if you could find something and then dilute it, or like she said, kind of some of these solid ideas seem pretty good. This is from Meow Meow to it's a solid shampoo bar. So adorable. Um, but it's true, water is the universal solvent, and that's why we see it as the base of so many formulas. Um, so I, I agree, but I also disagree, because you want to make sure that, you know, things are made appropriately. And then I'm hoping that this will be discussed. You know, a lot of these glass packages tend to have more natural products, or tend to be made organically, or with essential oils. And I think it takes something like 22 to 25 pounds of roses or flowers just to create five milliliters of essential oil. And so when people are purchasing, you know, these natural products, often things that are made in a laboratory are actually more sustainable than things that are farmed. Because when you farm something, you have to grow, water, feed, you know, collect, distill, um, crush down, you know, extract, and then put it into a product. Whereas if you just take that active and create it in a laboratory, the molecule itself could be exactly the same, um, and you just put it in a product. For instance, a salicylic acid, you can make it in a lab, or you could get it from a willow tree. Hyaluronic acid, you could get it from rooster combs, or you could make it in a laboratory. Um, little things like that, which we don't always think about the actual ingredients in here, too. Hopefully Hiram will bring a little bit of light to this as well. Um, I'm excited to see what he has to say. Beyond packaging, something else we should take into consideration are ingredients. So here there are a few things that I know off the top of my head to recommend you avoid, and that is microplastics, ingredients that hurt our coral reefs, and other harsh ingredients that can be harmful to aquatic life in general. Let's try to avoid those things. That's really good. I was like, why did you just speak, Cassandra? She was gonna say it anyways, but she didn't actually bring up like essential oils yet. Um, but yes, microplastics especially. Um, there's actually some controversy between microplastics because yes, the solid ones are bad, but we have new research to show that bacteria or microbes can ferment certain plastics, um, not as fast as we need them to, uh, but there could be plastic broken down by bacteria in the environment and in the oceans, which is great. Also, there's a lot of confusion about polyethylene, um, but polyethylene is in everything. You can have it in a liquid form or you can have it in a solid form. And the solid form that we have in our bags or in these microplastic beads, horrible. Um, but when it's in a liquid form or when it's in the form of polyethylene glycol, like you cannot find a product without that. And the question is, in that liquid form, is it actually that bad? And I have been trying to reach out to some PhDs to figure this out. I've actually been working on a video on this for six months and I will be sharing more when I have answers. But the truth is that there's not a lot of research on polyethylene glycol or polyethylene as a liquid, you know, in aquatic systems or in our environments. So it could be completely harmless or it could be not the best. Um, right now, solid polyethylene should definitely be avoided. You should definitely avoid the microplastics she's talking about and look for things like jojoba beads. Um, but you know, other than that, I'm not exactly sure, and I hope that I'll be able to uncover more, or I'm hoping that she'll be able to actually share more insights, you know, from this video. With all of those things in mind, I tried to come up with three different products for the seven steps that I would put into my personal skincare routine. These steps include cleanse one, cleanse two, 
toner, treatment, mask, moisturizer, and SPF. You can't forget the SPF or Hiram will come for all of us. Sunscreen. But you know it's the most important. So speaking of Hiram, let's get into the interview I did with him where I brought all of the things that I know to be sustainable because that's where my expertise lies and he's going to tell us if they're good for our skin because that's where his expertise lies. Let's do it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Hiram. Super excited to hear your feedback on some of these skincare items. <laughs> Honestly, this routine is perfect. It does have steps that you technically don't need, but these are things that maybe she wants, maybe she wants to treat something. Um, a very reasonable routine, and I love, yes, including the SPF, there's a double cleanse. Mwah. I wanted to introduce an item that is by this brand that uses food waste to make skincare, which I Ooh. know can sound scary, and I'm sure to you uh, may sound also intriguing, but the first item has not apricot-like shells, but it does have apricot powder. So I wanted to see what you thought about that. I'm excited to hear what Hiram thinks. I'm going to share a couple of my insights first since I don't want to be clouded by anything he says or I want to learn something new from him. First off, I actually love the idea of using recycled food waste. I've never heard of this brand, but I need to go look into them. Um, as long as it's purified, as long as it's put in a form that the skin can absorb, that's great. Um, what's interesting about you know, apricot shells versus apricot powder. This powder is just a finer ground of these shells. They can still be jagged, they can still cause tears in the skin, the micro tears. Um, especially if they're much smaller, they could kind of settle into the skin a little bit more. Now, if they are completely rounded on each side, on all of the edges, then that would be fine. But we really don't know, and because it varies so much between manufacturers, the safest thing to do, especially if you have sensitive skin, is to look for things like jojoba beads that are completely round and that do biodegrade and you know just try to avoid the shells the powders things of that nature but we'll see what Hiram has to say so I mean innovative first of all that they are you know repurposing something um, and the challenge when it comes to sustainability and skincare is always finding that balance of something that's going to be you know good and effective and safe for your skin while also good for the planet and it seems like a, a simple bridge but it's actually quite complicated the majority of times when it comes to exfoliating your face with a physical exfoliant it's really important that it's like rounded on the sides to make sure that you're not accidentally um, pressing those shards deeper into your skin and the problem with apricot is that it's very sharp and pointed all over the place and not even which means means as you continually press it into your skin, you're running the risk of like overly irritating and overly damaging your skin by pushing those shards deeper and deeper. So some could say that powder is a lot better than just the shells themselves on a green ingredient list. Technically, I don't think there's too much of a differentiation between the two. It really comes down to the specific product that you're using and more importantly, how often you're using it. Because realistically, I always say you shouldn't be using a scrub more than once a week. If you are using one once a week, it's still a little much, but I'm like, you know, it's it's at a, such a low um, level of usage that you're probably not going to see too much irritation. It's the truth. Um, when it comes to how often you should exfoliate, uh, he's totally right. Once a week is conservative. I would say you could do it up to three times a week, depending on your skin and depending on what concentration of a product, whether it's physical or chemical, etc., you're using. Um, I do prefer chemical exfoliants. I'm pretty sure that Hiram does as well. Um, they are more sustainable as well. And they usually don't contain things like, you know, scrubby beads, whether they're microplastics or apricot shells. But yeah, it is a tough one, especially because a lot of these natural brands or natural products tend to be the more sustainable ones. It's frustrating. As far as cleansing goes, the first cleanse, most of the time people talk about balms, oils, that sort of thing. And there's yes. a lot of talk in the sustainability community about like what oil is and isn't okay to cleanse with. I think I kind of know your stance on this, but if we're talking three oils, like jojoba, olive oil, and coconut oil, as far as a first cleanse goes, which of those, if any, do you think is the best and or the worst? This is a great question. I know that Hiram does not like olive oil or coconut oil, so I think he's going to say jojoba. Um, jojoba is special in that based on how it's chemically bonded, it acts more like a waxy esther, and I actually love to leave it on my acne prone skin. It works very well for those who are acne prone. Now, when it comes to cleansing, you know, oils can be broken up into their fatty acids, into their composition, and depending on how these oils are used can depend on how they harm or help your skin. 
For example, I have definitely come under fire talking about using coconut oil as a makeup remover. As long as you don't leave it on your skin, it does work. And to be completely technical, you know, even mineral oil, probably going to be, I don't know about the sustainability stance, um, but just leaving mineral oil or cooking oil on your face is a bad idea long term. But if you're using it to rinse off and then you're using a cleanser after that, um, it's a really great way to grab on and to remove all of this product. Again, some people don't like the feel, out of all these three, jojoba is the only one that I would leave on my skin because of the molecules within it and how it interacts with skin and mimics sebum. Um, coconut oil, and especially olive oil, it has a lot of oleic acid, which can disrupt a skin barrier. Coconut oil actually has ingredients that can help for acne, can be antibacterial. However, they have to be broken down into their fatty acids, separated from that triglyceride. And um, the enzymes in our skin might not be able to do that as appropriately as we want them to, which is why don't leave it on your skin, but for cleansing, actually, I don't hate any of these, and I would personally go with either the least expensive or the most sustainable one, which I'm hoping, you know, Shelby is going to shed some light on. But let's see what Hiram says. It really depends. Coconut oil can be, and olive oil specifically, can be really beneficial for breaking up the makeup and dirt, but I would only recommend them if you have, like, really dry skin, um, because they do have a potential of blocking pores in people with more oily skin. But jojoba oil, I personally would recommend just because it has so many benefits for the skin and works, in my opinion, well to do what the first cleanse should do without the potential pore clogging aspects. So for the second cleanse, I've heard you talk a little bit about bars versus the new technology, obviously, that comes with like a liquid soap, but obviously liquid soaps often come with more packaging. So in the zero waste movement, obviously we want to minimize that. So I put three bars here that you can kind of pick and choose which one you think may be good or if any of them are good. But overall, your thoughts on cleansing bars um, and if there are any ones out there that are Hiram approved. This is such a great question. Again, I'm gonna guess what Hiram says. I actually don't know if there are any that he would recommend. Maybe Dove, I feel like that's a TikTok thing and I know he's very active on TikTok. Um, when it comes to bars, they are normally more alkaline. You know, a bar of soap is normally more alkaline and kind of talking about concentration as well. Usually these bars are more concentrated because they are a solid. A lot of that water is either stuck inside of the product in bonds or it's, you know, removed. And because of this, bars can be a little bit more stripping. That squeaky feeling that some people get um, can be indicative of removing all of the lipids from the skin and kind of disrupting a skin barrier long term if you don't follow that up with something acidic in a toner or in your moisturizer or other steps in your routine. Again, everyone's skin is different. Bars are excellent, you know, for axillary area, for the groin area, things like that. Um, you can use them on your face, but I'm actually trying to think of any that might be Hiram approved. I'm even trying to think of some that are cruelty free, you know, and that I would personally flock to. I guess I don't like the experience as much. I prefer a liquid cleanser, but you know, everyone has different opinions and especially when it comes to zero waste, you know, maybe this is something that we as consumers need to think more about. And maybe this is something that the industry needs to innovate on, you know, create more gentle, skin friendly technology infused bar cleansers um, that are actually you know beneficial to skin drunk elephant has a cleansing bar um, and then also CeraVe actually also has a cleansing bar and then the other one I listed is by a brand that's quite popular in the zero waste movement called Meow Meow Tweet typically with cleansing bars you run the risk of bar soaps using uh, derivatives of palm oil in high concentrations which palm oil has a really iffy sustainability story and um, forced labor story and it just runs a lot of risk and it's it's hard to know if it's ethically sourced and sustainably sourced. The good thing about the Meow Meow Tuna is that from what I can see it has ingredients like olive oil, coconut oil, cocoa butter, sunflower seed oil, not ingredients that are derived from palm oil. So from a formulation standpoint in terms of actual really good cleansing I'm a little hesitant because the first two ingredients are known to be pore clogging if you're using it as a second cleanser. Mm. Um, out of the three, I personally would recommend the CeraVe one. From what I can see within this one, it doesn't include ingredients like that are most commonly known for having the highest concentration of palm oil. And it's not going to overly strip your skin as much as a lot of bar soaps that I can see. And of course it's fragrance free and good for sensitive skin. So I personally would recommend that one just because it does include the proper cleansing agents as opposed to the Meow Meow Tweet, which Although I can see the good intent and I love the good intent behind indie brands for sustainable um, you know, ingredients, it doesn't quite have the proper ingredients to deeply cleanse your skin and I would think would more likely clog your pores.
the truth. And again, it kind of comes down to, you know, these oils are great for breaking up and removing makeup um, and getting them off the face. But then, you know, especially if you have more sensitive skin, you don't want to leave those oils on the skin long term. And again, this is where brands like Seabay come in. Again, they are mermaid for ocean lovers. They have actually everything that they have is under $30. They have options like this that you can use for face or body. There are also these little seashells, which are adorable. They also have these little eye wipes. And, you know, instead of disposing of these, you can reuse them multiple times, just throw them in the laundry with your socks um, and you take them out and you're good to go. They also have face masks because, you know, being sustainable is also about protecting ourselves and others, protecting animals, our environments, and our fellow brothers and sisters as humans. The masks are technically not even part of the sponsorship. I just saw these and I love them. And again, this brand is from Canada. They're sustainable. They are trying to help out in ways that they can. Um, I think that what they're doing is really great, so I wanted to make sure to bring light to that. I will be doing giveaways with some of these things, and of course, all of their links are listed below. Um, if you currently use disposable makeup removal wipes or makeup removal pads, things like that, please finish what you have and then try to get something that is more eco-friendly. I will leave those down there for you, and if you, like me, are a mermaid, um, please feel free to join when it is sustainable and responsible for you to do so. It's what we're here for, to get the expertise rather than just what's sustainable, right? <laughs> if anybody knows of a gentle, you know, actual cleanser in bar form, something that has surfactants, things like that, please let me know, preferably one that is cruelty-free, because I'd be very interested in trying one out. Um, but for now, yeah, I personally have the Meow Meow Tweet, and um, yeah. I'm not doing too well on the on the bar cleanser front. I do have this product, which obviously I really haven't used. It's from Audacite. It's the Blue Aqua Cleansing Water. This is a cleansing water in a glass package, so it's actually a pretty cool option um, because it seems like it is more sustainable. It does have ingredients that Hiram definitely does not like, like essential oils and witch hazel, but I don't hate witch hazel. I actually see the benefit of it. Essential oils are not my favorite, but I don't avoid products that have them unless, you know, someone has a sensitivity. However, this one is a little bit more expensive. The turmeric in here is excellent. Um, I would assume that this is a more sustainable option, but again, it is a liquid, and I know that she was talking about bars being the most sustainable. And um, yeah, if anyone has recommendations, please share with with me your thoughts because I am quite intrigued and trying to do a little bit better. After we move out of the second cleanse, we move into toner, which is where the DIYs start to creep in and people start talking mm -hmm. about different sort of DIY zero waste skincare. The oh so famous apple cider vinegar toner. How do we feel about this? I cannot wait to hear what Hiram has to say about this. Apple cider is very acidic. It's fine because your stomach can neutralize it, uh, but your skin cannot. There are people who have gotten burns from apple cider vinegar. I, in my young, dumb skincare years of not understanding things, have used apple cider vinegar. If it is formulated into a product, that is better, but it is still not a first choice. If you have resilient skin and you use it in a product, then fine. I would never use it full strength. Always dilute it if you ever have to, or if your you know, hands are tied and you're doing it for some reason. But if you can, I would avoid it. Apple cider vinegar has a lot of acetic acid. Um, you know, for dietary reasons, some people like this. For the skin, it's definitely not as good as any of the other acids we use in skincare. It's not the same as your beta hydroxy acids like salicylic or your alpha hydroxy acids, really. Um, yeah, the purpose of the toning step is really to balance the pH of the skin. And um, this is so low that if you did use a really alkaline cleanser, this could bring it back down, but I would be afraid that it brings it down too low. Um, there are some fermented ingredients in apple cider vinegar, obviously, because it's vinegar, but you know, I would prefer something like, you know, a fermented black rice toner from something like Haru Haru um, or any of those products that have the fermentation and the acid without the more intense properties. And then, you you know, depending on whether or not the apple cider vinegar has the mother in it, it can continue fermenting when it's on the shelf. And based on that fermentation, you don't actually know how acidic or how strong one bottle is versus another. Um, food manufacturers do control that and they do try to, but especially if things are sitting there for a long time or if they are still having the active fermentation process happen because there's sugars left over, um, yeah, your products could get more potent with time, technically. So DIY skincare is just not a good idea. If I could go back and tell younger me something, it would be to stop with the DIY skincare like 10 years earlier than I did. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Cleansers were typically uh, very, very harsh to use overly stripping ingredients that were just really strong for the skin and would completely throw off the pH and a toner was necessary to balance that pH level. Now today, the cleansing ingredients that we use are 
really gentle for the skin. Do not massively throw off the pH level, but companies still love to sell you the idea of a toner. Overall, I just don't think it's necessary. Apple cider vinegar can have some slight exfoliation effects, but I just think the risk is too high for me to feel comfortable recommending it. Yeah, brings up some great points. And even as I'm looking through, you know, the zero waste products or the lower waste products or the eco-friendly products that I do have, um, you know, there's a liquid exfoliant that Hiram has recommended, but that's not really a toner. And you know, when you look at it, it's witch hazel, it's different extracts, it's different plants. It does have willow. There's some glass packaging, but yeah, toners, I can't really think of any that are, you know, sustainably packaged. And it is true, you don't technically need a toner. When you think about it, a toner is really just like a diluted serum in a way. If you're going for glass skin, like the Korean skincare look, you might want to layer your skincare to give you more of those layers or hydration. Um, is it a luxury? Absolutely. Is it necessary? No. If you enjoy it, should you stop using it? Um, if it doesn't take away from your experience of skincare, then go ahead and try cutting it out. But if it's a routine that you absolutely love, if it's something that brings you joy, continue with it, use what you have, and then when you're purchasing new things, try to choose things that are you know, packaged a little bit more sustainably. There's actually, and I'm sure you know this, not that many brands out there doing zero waste per se on top of sustainable ingredients. It's actually quite a small space. Um, but I did yeah. find one brand that I'm really interested to get your feedback on. Um, and they make a serum bar. Give us some feedback okay. on this brand called, I think it's like Do Mighty. I have never heard of this, but this looks very interesting. We do have blue tansy flower oil, which is supposed to be better for people who have acne prone skin. I did not find that to be the case for me, uh, but some people like it. We do have jojoba seed oil, we have flower oils. And again, this is something that again, I kind of talked about earlier that we see a lot of these zero waste or sustainable brands, the packaging is sustainable, but like if you got everything that's synthesized in a laboratory, it would be a lot more eco-friendly than actually harvesting these flowers and plants, crushing them and putting them into product. Um, Silica, squalene is good. Stabilized vitamin C is good. Um, ylang ylang flower oil, licorice extract could be good. And uh, L-glutamic acid, you know, for pigmentation issues or to help with a little bit of pigmentation. I would like to find something zero waste for acne prone skin. Um, but so far, yeah. Shelby's right, there's not a lot. I wonder what Hiram is going to say about this. Again, I don't hate this. If you are sensitive to fragrances or sensitive to plant extracts, then of course don't use it. Um, but I actually like that it is in a little tin and it is in a, yeah, it's in like a bar, uh, which I guess would be more sustainable from a shipping, you know, perspective. Ooh, she is expensive. <laughs> okay, awesome, it has a uh, chamomile, which is good for soothing a skin sensitivity. Um, it has jojoba seed oil, hibiscus, it has licorice extract, amazing ingredient for the skin. Even as he's reading through this, like, it's a bunch of oils. So is it really a treatment per se? It has a couple of those, you know, more brightening ingredients for pigmentation, but is it really a treatment? Or is this just like oils in a bar form, which would kind of act like a moisturizer, you know? I don't know. I don't know about this one. The only things I don't like about it is that it does have blue tansy flower oil, which I will say is good for reducing redness, but can have some possible irritating side effects. Uh, and it has the ylang ylang, which is definitely out of all of them, the most irritating. However, I have never seen formula like this where it's in a physical serum form. So automatically super innovative, really unique. And as long as the rest of your routine is you know, fragrance free, then I'd say you're probably fine. Definitely has a lot of good ingredients that I like. Very interesting indeed. I would be interested in getting my hands on this. Again, I do not hate fragrance. I see the benefits and the purposes of it in skincare from penetration enhancement to stability, you know, to the olfactory stimulation that we can get. But I understand Hiram has more sensitive skin. He likes to play things safe. And there are a lot of people who avoid fragrance in skincare. And again, I think that's where there's this big gap in the industry. There's not fragrance free, non-irritating, non-plant extract containing zero waste eco-friendly skincare options out there. Ren Skincare has set themselves up with a goal to be zero waste by 2021, which is very exciting. I think they seem like a Hiram approved type brand from what I know and what I can tell. So taking a look at this, I have tried some Ren Skincare. It was Susan Yara who got me started on them because she recommended it and I thought, oh cool. Um, I've tried them out in a couple of live streams. They are definitely not my favorite, but I don't hate them. Um, this right here is the anti-redness serum. I actually have this 
this one. I don't think it works the best, but it's not horrible. And I like that they do, you know, focus more on sustainability. This is a great goal for 2021. Now, when we look at the ingredients, algae extract is amazing. People think that will break them out. Usually it doesn't. It's phospholipids, soybean oil, caprylic triglyceride, all of these are very oily on the skin. Uh, glycerin as well, a humectant and hydrator. Now, we do have alcohol in here. Hiram hates alcohol. He might not like this. I understand the purpose in skincare. I don't hate alcohol. I understand that it might have evaporated when it's in the product or it evaporates quickly off the skin. Um, there's different acids. There's lactose. I actually don't hate this. Um, again, there are some seed oils that Hiram might not like, but to me, this is like the only one out of this routine that I'd be like, okay, happy to put my money down on this today since I actually have it in my bathroom. But I'm excited to see what Hiram has to say about this because I'm not sure how he would feel about it. Automatically, I'm going to praise any brand for that, no matter how I feel about the formulations. A lot of their formulas do include fragrance and essential oils, which I'm not crazy about, but they do have a few standout products that I love, specifically within the serum treatment category, their anti-redness serum. I was going to say I'm literally using that one. <laughs> no way. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yes. I've used that one for a while and I just think what they're doing is uh, is amazing and I hope they continue to launch more you know, products that have as little fragrance as possible um, just so I can, you know, continue to find new products from them that I love. I agree. I have the same wishes that Hiram does. Um, out of the Ren skincare that I've tried, they have a blemish treatment that, again, it isn't my favorite. It's okay. You have to use it for three days to a week to see results, but that's okay. Um, and especially if you're trying to really focus on low waste or if you're getting a gift for someone who's like, I'm all natural that could work. Um, it's their toner that reminds me of a more natural version or, you know, eco-friendly version of the Ordinary's Glycolic Toner. Um, theirs does have some orange and lemon in it, but it is a good AHA glowy toner. They do have a willow jelly cleanser. That's probably one of my favorite products from them. It's a very cool texture, very cool formula, um, but I don't know how sustainable it is. I'm assuming it's pretty sustainable based on what Shelby has shared, but I do think that it has more of a plastic container. And I don't know, I'm hoping that that'll be fully recyclable, but who knows? Um, their moisturizer wasn't the biggest fan of, but they do have some decent products. Um, and of course, if you're interested, look at the ingredients with me. I try to leave links below so that you can actually research kind of what those brands say about their products, read reviews, see if it's worth it for you. But um, yeah, Ren I don't hate, but they are definitely not on the top of my list. So you tell me if I'm wrong, but I think after treatments, people talk about masks. Is this, is this the proper order? I just have to say, I love face masks. They are my favorite part of a skincare routine because it forces you to take you time, relaxation time, self-care time, but there are different types of masks. She's right, if it's a sheet mask, it's basically a serum in a sheet, that's when you would use it. Um, most masks that I consider true masks are what you would use before your cleansing step, almost as like a cleanser or as a treatment, you know, in between cleanses. And then there are the peel off masks, which are basically exfoliators, which again, you would use before cleansing or after in between your cleanse steps. Um, we've actually done a video on what face masks actually are, how two of these are not face masks and what you need to know. But based on where she's putting this in her routine, I'm assuming she's talking about sheet masks, which now that we actually think about it, you have to throw away that cotton um i would i would hope that's sustainable i don't know but i guess i'll find out if you're doing it in the order of skincare products that like how you should apply them i always recommend doing like a mask first either um, before your cleanser or right after your cleanser depending on what type of mask it is okay um, but regardless masks aren't meant to be used every day so it really doesn't it doesn't matter too much what order you put it in masks are definitely like the pinnacle of zero waste diy skincare from charcoal masks yes. to avocado banana aloe vera I would just love to get your feedback on maybe some of those ingredients and uh, why they may or may not be a good idea for your skin. Looking forward to hear what Hiram has to say. Again, I have made these mistakes before. The truth is that with things like avocado or oatmeal or banana, you really can't hurt your skin, but all of the nutrients in these foods are bound up. You know, there's fiber, there's cellulose, there's different sugars. And um, if you put them in a skincare product, you can actually extract those and get them into the skin by just putting them on your face. Like what, what, what are you doing? Like if you love to rub food on your face, go for it, but it's not something that I would recommend. Now, especially DIY can get dangerous when we're talking about things like apple cider vinegar, which I have dumbassedly done before. When we're talking about lemon juice, when we're talking about baking soda, that is not something you wanna mess around with that can be very irritating to the skin. Um, don't do it. DIY skincare is not a good idea. It's a huge waste. You know, you can't really put it in your fridge. You can't preserve it. You have to throw away the excess. 
um, and again you're not even really getting the benefits spend a little bit of money on a product that actually works uh, that's in a sustainable package that's what I would recommend I'm interested to hear what Hiram has to say about this though because I don't think he's a fan of DIY um, yeah I'm excited to see what he says about this one yeah, so you know, when it comes to DIY, automatically you are running the risk of not knowing what concentrations of specific ingredients you should be mixing to achieve the best benefits with the least amount of irritation. But there are specific ingredients that I think are totally fine to use in DIY formulas. Uh, the main one being honey. Honey is incredible for the skin. It's naturally antibacterial, so you don't really run a high risk of bacteria, you know, collecting within the formula. Also oats are really beneficial for the skin for reducing redness and sensitivity. Very interesting things he brings up. I would agree with one and disagree kindly with the other. We're allowed to have different opinions. Um, when it comes to honey, it's true. Ancient Egyptians used to use it for its antibacterial properties. I have used honey face masks before. I don't anymore because I am vegan. Um, it is sticky. There are better antibacterial products out there, but if you're dead set on putting food on your face, honey is probably the safest way to go as long as it's actually honey and it's not adulterated with corn syrup because a lot of people don't know like 10% of the honey that's sold on shelves is not actually honey. Uh, you know, the supply cannot keep up with the demand, so people are being sold fake honey. Um, and that's obviously not going to be the same. When it comes to oats, I would disagree. Oats do have beta-glucans, so if they're formulated into a formula, that can work. Um, but naturally, you know, oats have a grain, they have a hole. You have to break them down through the process of digestion to get the nutrients. And your skin, if you just put it on your skin, it's, it's not going to help. They need to be broken down in a formula and applied to the skin to actually help out. Um, might there be something that I don't know? Absolutely, that is totally a possibility. But I would kind of disagree with the oats. You know, at least you can't really hurt yourself with them, uh, depending on if there's, you know, any sharp edges to them, depending on, I guess, the formulation or steel cut I wouldn't do. Um, but then if you hydrate them in water and cook them first, um, I'm trying to think, like, even if you wanted to do a DIY face mask, what would be the safest bet? Um, my recommendation, if you had to, would be betonite clay, kaolin clay, or even like diatomaceous earth. These are relatively hard to hurt yourself with. They can be drying, uh, you know, but they're really good for oil control. You could mix them up with some water. Not the apple cider vinegar, not the baking soda, not the lemon juice. Those are not a good idea. Um, but still, like if you just bought that in a jar into something that was already formulated, like Hiram said, that would be better. Even Juice Beauty, they have a farm in Northern California. I've been lucky enough to be there. The founder drives an eco-friendly vehicle. Their entire, you know, warehouse and manufacturing and facility is solar powered. Um, their product does have a few essential oils in them, but it is better. It's not for the most sensitive skin, but it's a really good mask, you know, that has a lot of these beneficial ingredients like charcoal or, you know, alpha hydroxy acids, but that aren't overly stripping or damaging to the skin. Um, and, you know, it's preserved, so it lasts longer um, than something that you would make on your own. If you really wanted to DIY it, those three clays would be my top recommendation. Just buy something that's made properly have it be preserved well, use it sparingly. <laughs> That's what I would recommend. I think there's a lot of crossover between the zero waste movement and people who think that natural is always best. Packaging and uh, sourcing solutions that are sustainable, ethical. I think by combining those two industries and finding commonality between them as opposed to constantly fighting, I think that's really the solution for long-term sustainability instead of these two industries that are just constantly going back and forth and never really finding mutual solutions. It's so true. Again, natural is not always better. And um, a lot of the brands that are more sustainable have all these natural products. But like we discussed, you know, you need 22 to 25 pounds of flowers just to create a little bit of essential oil. Tell me how that's sustainable in any way getting things from lab manufacturing is going to be more sustainable and then putting them into you know packages and boxes that are more sustainable is in my opinion the best way to go about things um, but obviously those feel like two very different types of consumers and i feel like the industry needs to kind of break down some of those myths and bridge that gap i have this one hair that just has a mind of its own today we should name it Give her a name. <laughs> Next step that I wanted to get your thoughts on is moisturizer, obviously. Actually, I know some of your favorites because I'm also a Hiram skincare fan. Oh. You have to know this. <laughs> Thank you. But I picked out two that are quite popular in the zero waste like movement and want to get your thoughts on them. So the first one is a brand called Yay for Earth. 
and they use all natural ingredients. It's actually a brand started by a friend of mine, but it's oh, gone cool. huge. I think they're sold even at Urban Outfitters now. Oh, wow. So I'd love to get your thoughts on the ingredients and all that good stuff. I would say this formula is definitely for someone who has dry skin uh, because the beeswax and the olive oil, all they're great for just kind of locking in the moisture. They're not great for someone who has like acne prone skin or maybe oily skin. So when I pull this up, I love the shea butter. The pomegranate's great, the beeswax, um, as a vegan, that's not something that I would consume. And then olive oil, again, for some people it's okay. I know Jennifer Lopez is gonna be putting it in her skincare line, um, but it can have oleic acid, and if it's not combined with the other acids that it needs, it can, you know, really disrupt your skin's natural barrier. Um, you know, it can cause issues and irritation. I personally wouldn't recommend this. It looks more like a balm if you wanted to use it on your cuticles, on, you know, your lips or something maybe. Um, I'm happy that so many people love it. It does look sustainable, but I'm interested to see what Hiram has to say about this because it does look like it's relatively fragrance-free apart from that pomegranate oil. Um, yeah. If these are the only four ingredients, I'd be nervous about the formula um, potentially going bad quickly just because it doesn't have any preservatives to make sure that the formula remains stable. I really like that Hiram brings this up. I do disagree in this instance, but in general, I think preservatives are something we need to talk about. You know, a lot of people who are more natural don't like preservatives. And it's like, well, just as Hiram said, preservatives stop your products from going bad. The thing is that products that are formulated with a water base are normally what need more preservatives. Oils, you know, they can go rancid, but you really don't need a lot of preservatives for oils and since this is just beeswax and oils I don't actually think you would need preservatives for this um, again I could be totally wrong but that would be my personal opinion on it and then you know for anything that has water in it you need preservatives and I think that you know the natural community should kind of step it up in that sense um, because preservatives are not dangerous they're not harmful they are what keep your products safe and protected you know and I think that that is a bit of fear-mongering that a lot of companies do that we should probably break down but I'm so happy to see that is essential oil free. That is so rare to find in the, in the um, you know, uh, zero waste community. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So the other brand that I put on this list for Hiram to kind of rank for us or look at the ingredients is a brand that I really love, but I don't personally use this face moisturizer. This is interesting. It does have aloe. Um, and again, it does have safflower seed oil, different oils and apricot. This one's more of a hydrator plus moisturizer, but again, it's a lot of oils. Like just use jojoba oil. Um, depending on the price, this one would be my favorite out of the two, but yeah, I do think that the zero waste community needs better options. For example, there's one moisturizer that I purchased that I thought was like super zero waste. Um, it was a while ago. It's the Sailor Deep Blue Face Moisturizer. It has a lot of fragrances in it though. Um, it is basically oil. It does have a hoba, but it has bergamot, which, you know, bergamot don't even get me started. The only thing is that when it came, you know, it had this plastic you know, sealing on it to make sure that the product is like, you know, safe or whatever. And I was like, wait, doesn't that defeat the fact that it's packaged in glass? So yeah, it's, it's a struggle bus. They send you the packaging that you see, you use it and then you send it back and they reuse it. Oh, so it's not just a recycling that. system. It's actually a reuse system, which is great. That's so awesome. we want to know what you think about the ingredients. Okay. So immediately looking at it, it has safflower seed oil, it has jojoba seed oil, shea butter, um, avocado oil, propanediol, all good for moisturizing the skin. And I'm also seeing that it's palm oil free. So propanediol, an ingredient commonly from um, palm oil. I'm guessing it's not from palm oil, which is good. I'm so happy that we're having the conversation on palm oil. Um, that is important. From my understanding, propanediol, or at least how I referred to it, is uh, derived from corn. Um, it works as a penetration enhancer and it gives kind of viscosity or slip to a product. I love it in products. We use it in cosmetic chemistry. Uh, you know, it's not something that I would ever be concerned about, but I will have to look into it and see if it's ever derived from palm trees. Um, because, you know, if so, then that would definitely be a concern, which I'm happy is being brought up. But uh, I also love the packaging of this. I think that this, you know, is not only reuse, but refill is such a great idea. It's kind of like Fenty skin, but Fenty skin was technically plastic. So this feels like the even more sustainable version of that, um, which, you know, for me as a consumer is exciting. And I'm sad that I haven't heard about it until just now. The only thing I don't like about it, it has grapefruit oil, sweet orange oil, and lemon oil. Now, citrus essential oils are the most irritating of all the essential oils for the skin. And this is one thing that I am always struggling with on my channel is 
finding the balance between should I go for the most sustainable option or should I go for the most ingredient conscious option? That is one of the only, if the only brand I've ever found that like you send back your packaging and they um, repurpose it, which from a fulfillment standpoint is so difficult to do. Fragrance free formulas, I would be all over it all over it. And who knows, I may be able to find some formulas from them that are. It seems that a lot of brands that are maybe doing a little bit better on the packaging side, I keep finding have all this fragrance. At what point will we see them realize that the market is shifting and realizing that we don't need all of this fragrance to have a good product? Fragrance is such a huge part of the consumer experience. I will say it's very hard to formulate skincare products that don't smell bad. A lot of times brands yeah. will want to make it fragrance free, but then when they actually smell the formula, they're like, oh, this doesn't smell good. And it's like, well, yeah, the ingredients that you're using have a natural aroma that's bad. So true. Have you ever smelled raw shea butter? I, I really do think the majority of the reason is companies are so fearful that consumers are not gonna be interested in purchasing their products if it doesn't have a fragrance. And I think Gen Z, is changing that. I really think that, you know, a lot of younger people are saying, no, we care about what we put on our skin, um, that we're okay if it doesn't have this amazing fragrance and this amazing scent. And we're seeing more and more brands shift that way. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on face theory? I, well, I know that you've talked about them and I think I've literally checked them out because you did, okay. but I've never tried them out before. Okay. I would highly recommend them. Um, they're a brand that focuses on creating as reusable and as uh, the most sustainable type and recyclable type of glass packaging um, that comes with like aluminum mm. lids. Um, they'll use like aluminum tubes, um, different things that can be recycled or repurposed really easily. I mean, that I personally feel is that we're not really going to recycle our way out of the current like waste problem that we're seeing. I think the solution is a new system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and you hit the nail on the head with difficulty. The the barrier to entry for a small brand being able to do that is like next to impossible. So I, I agree there needs to be more innovation. It's it's not cheap to do those things mm -hmm. as as the system stands currently. I totally agree with everything said here. I think that it's bigger. I think that it's an issue about reform. It's an issue about value chains. It's an issue about, you know, kind of changing the way we've always done things. And normally when people do things so radically or differently, they are met with a lot of either discrimination or hate or pushback, right? Um, but I think that, you know, as Hiram mentioned, people nowadays are especially more conscious than ever. We want things that are going to benefit not only ourselves, but future generations. That's really important. And I'm hoping that, you know, companies will either get whiff of this and large conglomerations and corporate entities will do this, or some of these small indie brands will step up and start doing it and people will start noticing. After moisturizer, last and most important step, I know every single time Hiram reacts to a skincare routine, if you don't include SPF, <laughs> he's coming for you. So we need to find out what are some good sustainably packaged, also reef safe, because I think even if you can't find a sustainably packaged sunscreen, you can always find one with better ingredients for the environment. But if we're looking at sustainable packaging, I have a few options for you to look at and tell me um, what you think of their ingredients list and we can go from there. I'm assuming, I'm hoping that she's gonna bring up Meow Meow Tweet. That is the most sustainable sunscreen that I know of and it's because they have this aluminum package that you can send back and refill. It is not the most uh, less white casty. Um, we also bring up reef safe sunscreens. That is a myth that I believed in forever. I don't actually think reef safe matters that much. I believe that all sunscreens can damage the coral reefs and it's more about the environment and what we're doing with carbon emissions rather than the reefs. The studies and the data that was presented might might not be the most conclusive. That's something that I've had to learn, you know, within the last six months or so. Um, I will leave some references and resources below since this is not something I fully understand at this point, especially because in the past I would always go for reef safe. Um, but yeah, you need to make sure that you're protecting your skin and hopefully the planet at the same time. In order to advertise yourself as having an SPF, you have to go through um, FDA approval, you have to go through pretty strict guidelines and sometimes it can take years to get approval. So automatically there's a level of testing that for me is like, oh, I can rest easy. I can know that it's not someone necessarily just putting some ingredients in a jar and selling it. The white cast is, yes, it is, <laughs> it is an intense experience, but that's actually very popular in Hawaii where I live. I don't know this one. Sunflower oil, green tea, black tea, coffee bean, hemp seed, cocoa, mango, beeswax, rosemary, vitamin E. Interesting, but I don't even understand where that SPF comes in. There must be more ingredients that aren't listed here because you would need something like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Um, 
Interesting. Interesting. It has ingredients like green tea, black tea, um, caffeine, hemp seed oil, just really, really good ingredients. I'm not familiar with the Meow Meow Tweet one, which love that it comes in aluminum packaging. If there's even a risk of it possibly bleaching coral reefs, I don't I don't want to even touch it. Like that's my stance on it, which is why I love zinc oxide. Plus it's just the best. It's best for irritated skin. It protects so well. And so this one has um, 20% zinc oxide. Uh, it has an SPF 25. That's a little low. I typically start at SPF 30, but you know what? We can work with it. <laughs> I love the packaging. Um, I'm curious if you're familiar with the sunscreen, um, the Love Kinship probiotic sunscreen. No, I don't know about it. They use collected ocean trash to make their packaging um, materials. Wow. Which I okay. love. Yeah. You can scan a QR code on the back to see where around the world the trash was collected from to make that specific product. They have moisturizer, they have cleanser, they have um, they have sunscreen. I was not aware of this at all, and this is so cool. This is what I'm talking about. Plastic might not always be horrible, especially if it is repurposed like this. Um, I don't know about this, but I'm very excited too. Again, we have aloe, we have apple, we have red raspberry, lactobacillus ferment. This is really cool. They seem like a really awesome brand. I'll definitely check out that brand. Thank you so much for that, Hiram. Yeah, That's course. what we're looking for, right? The bridge, we just, yes. we just crossed it just like this exactly <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for doing this with me um of course. and i'll have everything that hiram did approved and if he recommends something that i didn't have i'll have it all linked below so obviously creating the perfect zero waste skincare routine is not the easiest or most accessible thing, but we are definitely seeing shifts in the market because of consumer demand. For instance, take Native Deodorant. I've been buying Native Deodorant for years because I really, really love their formula. It's the only one that's worked for me. It's not just me, right? It's all of us together. Have asked Native to please come up with a better packaging. They switched recently from plastic to recyclable and compostable paperboard. I am so happy that she mentions this. It's so true. I still have this one. This is the unscented deodorant um, because I'm not gonna just throw it away. I'm going to use it. But I do also have the paper ones that I actually really love. Um, the paper ones are fantastic. This is a perfect example of kind of consumer requests shaping what markets sell, which is wonderful. It's all supply and demand, right? So definitely show love to the brands who are already taking those initiatives to be less packaging, more sustainable, et cetera but also take the time to write to companies that you loved before you started this journey and encourage them to change their packaging too because the whole idea of sustainability is to get everybody on board, not just you and me. The biggest thank you to Hiram for helping me make this video and being our resident skincare specialist to which I am not. And let me know what other experts in their fields I should have come on to this channel to give you guys advice on and I would I'd love to hear it. So remember, until next time, you cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that you can do. Bye guys. That is such a cute outro and so true. This was so enjoyable and much needed. I learned so much from Shelby and from Hiram together, kind of talking about these things. I know that as a consumer, I definitely need to do better. I am trying my best. I think that it would have been cool to hear about like, you know, some of the swaps that we can make from makeup wipes, especially since they're so well loved, um, you know, or kind of these cotton rounds. That I think is also something, you know, to consider. And even just turning the water off while you wash your face. I know that, you know, her channel probably already understands that, her viewers do. But like, we watch the Harper's Bazaar videos and like the Vogue videos and people just leave the tap water running. And I'm like, I know you're a celebrity and you can afford it, but like, can we please like be a little bit more cognizant of our water usage? It's my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> when I was younger, I would get slapped if I left the water running. Like, don't even talk to me about it. There are things that try to do better, um, but again, there's nothing that is completely great. Again, the sunscreen, the kinship one that Hyra mentioned, I'm so excited to look into. This is one that I might recommend, uh, my shell. It does have more of a glass package, but um, you know, it is a real struggle, and I think that we need something that bridges the gap between, like Hiram said, fragrance-free, non-irritating, getting rid of the natural is better, but still kind of catering to the glass packaging, the sustainable shipping and manufacturing, um, the sustainable sourcing, etc. What did you learn? Did we cover something here that you don't know? Is there a brand that I need to look into? Or do you know anything about this polyethylene situation? Because I think that we need to discuss that. If you're interested in Seabay, again, we are working with them as a charity partner for this video, which I'm so happy to do. And their face washing products, as well as their face masks will be listed below. Again, everything they have is below $30. They're made in Canada. They support environmental conservation and this partnership with them does as well. I really enjoyed this. Admittedly, I don't watch a lot of Shelby's content. Again, if it weren't for the beautiful butterflies and the YouTube algorithm, I don't know if I even
even would have known it existed. So I am so happy to be both subscribed and be able to watch and react to this video. Make sure that you have liked and subscribed to this video as well. If you want more reaction videos, specifically where people do leave the water on, you can cringe with me about that here. And overall, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. Love you guys. Bye.